Mm -hmm. Hello, I'm Zhihov, a CSPT student from SMU, and I'm going to share my work. We explore the inductive gene from two more perspective uh, um, views. First is uh, generalizing gene across graphs, uh, in which we tackle with a problem of uh, semi-supervised node classification across graphs. And uh, second, we generalizing gene across time, in which we deal with uh, temporal link prediction. Semi-supervised node classification is an important task in information retrieval. And uh, the, uh, prop the approaches can be mainly divided into two parts, uh, transactive approaches and uh, inductive approaches. Uh, here we mainly focus on the inductive approaches. Um, while the traditional semi-supervised uh, methods uh, mostly assume an inductive, oh, sorry, the transactive setting in which we learn a model that can uh, only be applied to the existing nodes of the same graph and cannot be applied to a new node or, or entirely new graph. Uh, although there are some inductive methods, but they train an inductive model to apply for all new graphs uh, while neglect the differences across graphs. Um, for example, the Flickr subgraphs of different galleries uh, will have uh, different distributions of nodes and labels. And to deal with such intergraph differences, it remains challenging to formulate an inductive uh, approach that not only becomes aware of, but also customized to the differences across graphs. To be more specific, there are two open questions to address. Question one, how do we dynamically adjust the inductive model? Question two, what form of general knowledge can empower semi-supervised node classification on a new graph? And in this work, we resort to the meta-learning paradigm in which we do not directly train an inductive model. Instead, we learn a form of general knowledge that can be quickly updated to a new graph. And for question two, on one hand, every semi-supervised node classification uh, is different, which arises from different nodes and labels. On the other hand, each graph is different, providing a different context. Uh, so um, it is necessary to um, develop one model that can encode both uh, task and uh, graph, la graph level differences. Our method as a figure illustrates. For task level differences, we learn a task provider theta that can be eventually adapted to a new task in a new graph. And for graph differences, we learn a graph prior phi and that can first transform the theta into theta i conditioned on a graph i before further adapted to the final model Theta i prime. Let's look at the detailed framework. First of all, as shown in the figure A, we take a training graph and split its nodes into two subsides, and namely support side and the query side, following the meta learning paradigm. Uh, while the in the training graph, the Suppose nodes and uh, query nodes are known. We regard the 
support nodes are the only label nodes, and uh, the query nodes are the unlabeled nodes to simulate the semi supervised classification task. And uh, in the testing graph, the labeled and the unlabeled nodes naturally form the support side and query side, whereas the ultimate goal is to predict the unknown labels of the query side in the testing graph. On the, then on the simulated task, uh, we train a task prior theta and uh, graph prior phi. And the, the general knowledge encode the dual level adaptations at both graph and task levels. Um, to be more specific, as illustrated in figure B, we first uh, transform the task prior theta into theta i conditioned on the graph g i, um, the graph prior phi, which captures and adapts for the Markov differences across graphs. On the other hand, as illustrated in figure C, the task prior theta, uh, which captures and uh, adapts the micro differences across tasks. And uh, finally, we got the dual adapted model theta i prime. Temporal graphs widely exist in our life. Here is a toy example for research collaborations that evolve through time, T1, T2, T3, and so on. Each node is a researcher, and each link is a collaboration between researchers from a specific time. Uh, in order to effectively model the events of link formation on a temporal graph, we propose a hoax process-based GNN, which not take uh, discrete sn snapshots and the inductive to new nodes and uh, model the exciting effects. But there are still two open questions to address. Question one, how do we capture the uniqueness of events on an individual scale? That is to say, different event has its uniqueness. And question two, how do we govern the occurrence of events on a collective scale? That is to say, events having calm node are influenced by this calm node. Here our task here is a temporal graph link prediction. And that is to say, we predict whether there will be a link between two nodes at a future time t. And we pro present a normal framework for temporal graph representation learning called a trend. Building up on a hoax process, GN, the proposed method is able to model the link formation in an inductive manner. And more important, it integrates uh, both the uh, event and node dynamics into the model to capture the individual and the collective's characteristics. Temporal point process models uh, sequential events, assuming that uh, historical events before time t will influence the occurrence of current event. And the Hox process is a typical temporal point process. Here is a conditional intensity function of the Hox process, in which the new t is a base rate determined by the property of the event itself. And the kappa is a time decay kernel, which is usually in the form of exponential function. And as this intensity function shows, 
uh, the occurrence of current event is not dependent on the occur occurrence of uh, the event at the last time step, but uh, influenced by the historical events. Uh, such property is terrible for modeling the temporal link formation because the occurrence of a current event um, is influenced with higher intensity by more recent events, um, while events happen happened uh, uh, a long time ago would contribute less to the occurrence of current event. In the context of a temporal graph, the Hox process is able to model the link formation process. Specifically, whether or not I and J form a link at time t can be quantified by the conditional intensity of the event as follows. Here, new IJT is a base rate um, determined by the uh, two target nodes, I and J. And uh, here is a HJT is a historical neighbor site uh, for node J. Uh, for example, in this uh, toy, toy graph, it is FJ4. And uh, the gamma is uh, excitement for, from historical neighbor node. Kappa is a time decay kernel uh, in the form of uh, exponential function. And here note that uh, the sigma is a learnable scalar which con controls the uh, decay rate. And next, we use uh, two temporal node representations and one transfer function to materialize the aforementioned conditional intensity. They should meet the following criteria. First, HIT, HJT, and should be derived from not only their safe information, but also their historical neighbor's information, because the safe information is the basis for the base intensity, uh, and uh, the historical neighbors models uh, excitement from historical events. Of course, the transfer function f must be positive for representing the intensity, in other words, the possibility. Um, in conclusion, first, we generalize GN across graphs and the proposed MIGN containing a dual adaptation at both the graph and task levels. Secondly, we generalize GN across time and propose trend, a null framework driven by event and node dynamics on a hoax process based GN. And that's all. Do you have any questions? <laughs>